Hello dear scholars, welcome to class. In today's lesson, you will learn about the interrelationship of some centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria. And under this topic, we will look at CE Fair, Bini culture and civilization area that is the similarities between these two cultures. We would also discuss the relationship between Kanem, Boronu and the outer states. Going further, we will discuss the Eagles and the Niger Delta city states. And after that, we will talk about the similarities between the different centers of civilization. We will look at the areas or the differences between the different centers of civilization. And lastly, we will talk about the areas of interaction among the different centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria. Now, what do we mean when we say interrelationship between some centers of civilization? This refers to the various forms of interactions and relations among various groups and centers of civilization in Nigeria in the pre-colonial era. Now, discussing the Ife and Bini interrelationship, in spite of the fact that each ethnic group in Nigeria occupies different and distinct territories. There have been some remarkable cultural contacts among these ethnic groups. And according to tradition, the relationship between Benin and Ife Kingdom began many years ago. The Edo people were originally ruled by the Ogiso dynasty. The Ogiso, whose name meant kings or ruler of the sky, called their land Igodomigolo. The Ogiso ruled for a number of years until the 12th century when there was a palace intrigue. The first queen, who was jealous and also barren, sentenced the crown prince to death. But however, the executioners had mercy on the crown prince and sent him free, allowing him to escape. The prince, according to tradition, changed his name from Ekeladeran to Izodua and found his way to Ileife. After a number of years and, co and a consultation of the oracle, it was discovered that the prince was still alive. He was traced to Ileife by the chiefs of Igonomigodo. The chiefs begged him to return, but due to his age, Izodua or Odudua, as the Ife people now called him at the time, agreed to release his son, Oramian, to them. Oramian returned to Igodomigodo with the chiefs, but it was, however, opposed by one of the palace chiefs, Ogiame Iribo. Oramian lived at Usama in a place built for him, that's a palace that was built for him, and he soon married a princess and they had a son. Now, after some years, he called the people and abdicated from the throne, remarking that the country was a land of vexation, which means Ilei Binu. He declared that only a child that was born, trained, and educated in the land could rule over the people. He caused his son to be made king over the people. Oramian returned to Ileife. It should be noted that um, these historical facts that has been corroborated with archaeological evidence has often been disrupted or disputed by a group of Yoruba people who still believe that Odudua is not a Kalandera and that Odudua came from God and descended from the sky. Now, apart from being linked through oral history and tradition, both Ife and Bini Kingdom also share some similarities in the areas of artwork and monarchical system of government. Both kingdoms have a central figure with a semi-divine statue. Ife craftsmen were sent to Benin to train the craftsmen in brass and bronze casting. It is also noted that the monarch cannot rule alone in both kingdoms. On a religious level, both kingdoms shared similar beliefs in the phantom of gods headed by a supreme being. Alright, next up, let us talk about the relationship between Kanem Bornu and 
the Alsa states. Kane Bronu and the Alsa states of Kanu, Katsina, Daura, and Zauzau had existed independently as centers of culture and civilization. But over the centuries, a variety of relationships had developed among them due to many factors. For example, the factor of migration brought Abu Yazid, also known as Bayajida, to Bornu. From Bornu, this prince of Baghdad eventually found his way to Daura, and the marriage took place between the prince and the then queen of Daura, whose name was Daurama. And their union was blessed with more princes that saw the expansion of the Alsa states, that is, the kingship system, all over the Alsa land. The states also related in trade and other commercial activities. Wars were also fought between the states. These wars had their consequences on the relationship between Kanem Bornu and the Alsa states. There were, in addition, some social and religious factors that contributed to their relationship. For example, while Muslim pilgrims were going to Mecca, they trekked over the land from Alsa land through Kanembronu onward to Sudan, Egypt, and the Nile across to Saudi Arabia. But however, with the modern air transport pilgrimage to Mecca by road for these areas ceased completely. The pre-colonial states of Kanembronu and the Alsa states were also engaged very much in cultivating, producing, which the producing crops which they traded among themselves all right going further let's talk about the Igbo and the Niger Delta city states the Igbo people whose land is in eastern part of Nigeria have been close neighbors to the people and the civilization of the riverine areas of the Niger Delta city states for centuries trade on canoes along the Niger Benue conflicts down to the Delta had provided opportunities for the two areas to relate favorably. The entire terrain constitutes a single social, cultural, political hazard of civilization. Their belief system, apart from the entry of Christianity into the region, were similar. Through the centuries, they have traded heavily among themselves. Their political structure was similar, largely based on kinship clan and extended families. Their societies were also governed through family heads rather than through absolute monarch. But now let's talk about the similarities between the different centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria. Despite the differences in geographical location, some of the centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria shared similar characteristics. These similarities can be seen in the structure of their political system, the religious beliefs, the culture and the custom, the food they eat, the marriage or the marriage practices, and so on. Now let's talk about the political system. For instance, the Igbo community and the Niger Delta city states use a system of government that was meritocracy and gerotocracy in their political system. Both societies elected old, wise men that were chosen from various families, clans, and companions to make and execute laws for the community. Power and authority are also invested in their council of elders. The council of elders ensure the smooth running of the community with the ordinary citizens, giving equal opportunity to contribute to the government of their community. This council of elders represents the will of the people and are often assisted by the age grade, title holders, as well as the men and as the women groups. The Ife and the Benin kingdoms had central figureheads who combined both spiritual and political functions. The paramount ruler was regarded as being semi-divine. He was assisted by the council of chiefs. Lesser chiefs located outside the kingdom, paid their homage and pledged their loyalty to the paramount ruler. All right, another similarity that we are going to discuss today is religious beliefs. Some of 
these centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria shared similar religious beliefs. Prior to the coming of Christianity and Islam, these centers had a strong belief in supreme being regarded as the creator of all. It was seen as being unapproachable. So therefore, intermediaries were needed. Various gods and goddesses were worshipped. There were a link between the community and the supreme being. They also performed other functions as well. They had their own followers who performed various festivals meant to ensure continual access to the land and the people's fertility and well-being. There were also ancestor worship among the Igbos and the Niger Delta city-state. It was believed that when relatives died, their spirit stayed with the family or the community. They believed that these spirits could talk to the Supreme God or even help solve problems. The ancestors were seen as a link to the gods and the goddess. Shrines were set up in some compounds and dedicated to the worship of these ancestors. Another similarity we will discuss today is culture and custom. When a marriage was conducted, a bride price was paid by the groom's family to the bride's family. This was a common practice among the centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria. It was expected that the bride would be a virgin and that her family should be free from any form of scandal. The extent of the bride price was determined by the social level of the family. The, ma the man was seen as the head of the family and was allowed to marry as many wives as he could. It was believed that the more children he had, the more blessed the man was. Extended families took a pride of place in these centers of civilization. Grandparents, cousins, aunties, uncles, sisters and brothers, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law worked as a unit. Family relationship was guarded by seniority and hierarchy, age and position that was earned and respected. In these pre-colonial centers of civilization, except the Igbo, women were not given that much pride of place to speak in a gathering. Various customs followed in these societies were meant to prevent moral decency and to instill values in the citizens. Adultery, premarital sex, lying and disrespect to the gods of the land were frowned on in these centers of civilization. There was also a rich tradition of festivals where masquerades come out and among the centers of civilization. The masquerades were used to appeal to the gods and the goddesses to initiate new members into age grades or as traditional gatherings. Most of the customs and culture was derived from happenings in the past and to discourage bad behavior. The centers of civilization also shared similar tastes in musical instruments, drums, flutes, saxophone, and trumpets. These were used in playing music in the centers of civilization. Next up, let's talk about the food as a similarity between the centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria. For instance, pounded yam is a staple food that was shared by many of the centers of civilization in pre-colonial Nigeria. Yam was grown and celebrated as a king of crops, especially in Igbo society. Next up, let's talk about the position of women. Women played a very active role during the pre-colonial era. Now, apart from being mothers and wives, women contributed greatly to the production of goods and services. As the pre-colonial Nigerian economy was at the subsistent level, women farmed along with their husbands and children on the farm. In Igbo society, women were responsible for production of palm oil and palm kernel. They also did local and long-distance trade, buying and selling food items and other commodities. They were also involved in food processing. Among the Ijaws and the rest of the Niger Delta city-states, Women processed fish and gari. They were also involved in activities such as poultry making and clothes weaving. They also served as religious accolades. 
the provided head skill and spiritual services most of the religious belief featured immortal females as goddesses in the niger delta city states women provided music songs and dances that were needed during religious festival they also acted as princesses diviners traditional and birth attendants women were also taught skills to earn a living concerning politics especially among the eagles women played a role in the community often at times they carried out certain functions of the men these functions are often complementary and also in Kanem Bornu, women held important roles in the royal family. The offices include those of the Magaji, the Queen Mother, and the Gumsu, that's the first wife of the Mai, that's the first wife of the king. All right. In Zaria, there was no difference. The city was actually founded by a woman, Queen Bakwa. Suruku. She had a daughter that was named Amina, who turned out to be a powerful and famous warrior. Amina expanded the borders of Zaria and made other outside states pay tribute to her. All right, so far we've talked about five points of similarities among the different centers of civilization in pre colonial Nigeria. Now let's talk about the differences between the different centers of civilization. In pre-colonial Nigeria, number one, we'll talk about the customs. Among the Igbo, the Efik, and the Ibibio, there, were, there was a fear of twins. The birth of twins was seen as a bad omen that was sent by the gods. Twins were considered supernatural beings who could bring disaster to the community. They were often put in clay pots and taken deep into the forest to die there. However, among the Yorubas, twins were not killed. They were celebrated and seen as being very important. It is believed that twins had supernatural powers. They could increase the parents' wealth. When one or both twins died, an Ibeji stator was then carved in their memory. The parents could treat these stators as if they were living children by singing and reading to them and caring for them. Another difference in custom and culture is child marriage this was prevalent among some centers of civilization in pre-colonial northern nigeria but frowned on in centers of civilization in pre-colonial southern nigeria okay number two of the differences we will discuss today is the treatment of women though regarded as free adults women had certain limitations that were placed on them these limitations usually saw them become subordinate to the men and their authority. Custom and tradition also diluted the place of women. Most were subjected to child marriage in some pre-colonial societies, the female genital mutilation, and other restrictions. Women were not allowed to inherit anything in most pre-colonial Nigerian um, societies they were sometimes seen as strangers in their father's houses next we'll talk about is religious belief the religion of islam permitted deep into the pre-colonial era uh, Alsa fulani societies and was also the model of the caliphate system of government the sultan was the head of government and also had great religious powers over his people in yoruba land the people did not operate a strong and central religion they practice animism the people believed in a supernatural power called eledumare they also believed in lesser gods and deities such as sango obatala osun ifa ogun and olokun this is the same with the Igbo people and other tribes in eastern and southern parts of Nigeria. The Igbo worshipped several gods and they believed in Chuku as the highest authority over everything on earth. They also believed in the existence of a personal guardian god called She. It is believed to be responsible for the success or the failure of a person. And lastly, we'll talk about political structure as another difference of 
or among the civilizations in pre-colonial Nigeria. All right, moving forward, let's talk about the areas of interaction among the people of different centers of civilization. We have the essential link, there was trade and commerce, there was diplomacy, social relationship, political relationship, wars, migration, and so on. With this, we have come to the end of our class for today and I hope you've gotten a lot. Until we meet again in the next class, goodbye and stay safe.